She said, nigga, I'm not trying to say, I'm just, Bree, Bree already told me what was going down, but I, huh? Yo, he had the UA design. You already knew. Okay. Well, why you ain't, why you ain't go? Yeah, okay. How much you call? To get in? I think we're third, but they sold out. Mm. 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 Yeah. Third and all. Well, we can give them a two for one special. They will come up, won't we? Okay. All right, let's go. Y'all great. Y'all great. Let's go first. Uh, what I said for this before. Oh, uh, let's see. What can we do? Let's see what can we do tonight. What can we talk about tonight? Oh, uh, there's a lot going on. Um, uh, Philippians four and uh, I guess a good place to start will be. And we're not gonna do everything like let's let's start at verse four. And uh, so I found myself um, I found myself kind of mm, I'm gonna say I was, I was down. But I found myself kind of disappointed, discouraged about really what's going on, and you know, you know, I just don't, I, I just don't get us because, you know, we still worried about what's going on on the have and the have not, and we had a major election that can, that can rock the very core of this, these United States, and y'all worry about what happened them doing on have and have not. I mean. I just don't I just don't get that. I mean, I don't see when I was younger, that really didn't matter to me. Because when I was a child, I spake as a child. I thought as a child. I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So I gotta I so so our appetite gotta change, especially those of you that have food. Because what you gotta do is make sure that the future looks bright. I was talking to some young man in the barbershop, and I said, "Listen, y'all need to understand that young man got a felony. I can't vote." I said, "How long? How long you? How long you had the felony? Oh, it's been about eight, nine years, <laughs> sir. After seven years, you get your rights back." <laughs> he said, "Guess what? But see, this is the sad commentary. I didn't know. So what I need to do? Fill out the paperwork." And start process. Have you paid all your restitution? Have you did everything? Yeah, I'm on probation. Well, sir, you can get your right. Ain't nobody never told me that. Do you think they're building jails for them? <coughs> That's a bid. Y'all do know the penal system is big. And it's a lucrative bid. Matter of fact, I got a friend that has the contract to all the state of Alabama prison, and he does the security system for him. And he a preacher, and he rich. We went to Haven together. Dad, you know that, that dog. But, but um, I'm saying that to say this. When is our appetite, and, I, and, and, it, and it, grieves, it grieves my spirit, because um, I want to know when we going to be grown. When you going to start acting like you're grown? At what point you going to start acting like you're grown? Because the sad commentary is most of our children act like they act because they really don't have no example. I'm just gonna let, let's just talk about it. before I get to the scripture. I'm just gonna let's just talk about it. because because <laughs> how many of y'all had y'all children sit by y'all watching the returns come in last night and talk and had and had a conversation about the election? How many of y'all did it? I saw Eric on Facebook. She had her daughter. Uh, Jr. asked me, "Well, we Republicans or Democrats?" <laughs> And I like to choke them to sleep. But I'm going to tell you why. See, when I was growing up, I knew that we were who we are. But because you go to school, you know, you intertwine with, you really don't know because that ain't the conversation that you talk about. And so, when we going to start being grown? 
When are we going to start having real conversations about my son is about to be 15 years old. So what I'm going to have to start doing strategically, and we kind of talked about it a little bit because he want to drive so bad. He's he going to be 15 in July. And so he, on this tip about he got to get his permit. I'm going to have to start having a conversation about the steps to what he should do if the police stops him. We got to start talking about that right now. And it's a say because my Caucasian friend who is the, who, who who has a son that's the same age as are won't have to have that conversation with his son because he ain't got nothing to worry about. Now if he gets stopped in Northport and he say who his name <laughs> say his name he might have the 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 pool but somewhere else he's gonna be in trouble. So when we gonna start being grown? When we gonna really when we gonna really look at life serious? And quit, you know, everything ain't about the Lord. You know, folk want folk want the president to be the pastor. Well, you know, he need to stand on God's word. No, he does not. Or he, she does not. He or she needs to protect the Constitution of the United States. That's their job. They are not the first pastor of the United States. All right? They are, they are the president, so it's their job. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. What's going to mess some of y'all up? is that some of y'all think Barack ain't no Christian, and he gonna shock some of y'all when he out of office, okay. and he ain't got to, he ain't got to uh, uphold what the office ain't got to uphold, and he gonna really tell some of us off. <laughs> because we don't understand when you are in a certain position, there are certain things that you can't say, and there are certain things that you can't do. And it is not his job to be the evangelist of the United States. It's his job to be president. Some of y'all say, mm -hmm, yeah, that's right. But some of y'all were mad with him, you know, about what he said. He got, he, I mean, it's, he got, it's, it's equal rights for all, right? All men are created equal. That's what the Constitution says. So all men are created equal. We got to treat, we got to treat everybody the same. You cannot, you cannot discriminate. So I want to put something on our mind because. And I'm going to use the scripture, I'm going to get to the scripture in a minute, because it's very important for us to understand that everybody in here grown, with, with the exception of the, the, the children, the few children. And most of you all have children, and if you don't have children, you got nieces, you got nephews, you got cousins, you got people that look up to you as older than you. And the whole thing is, are we going to leave the world better, or are we going to leave the world? Because the only thing they know how to do is turn up. That's it. Turn up. That's all they know how to do. That's it. That's I mean, they don't know. I mean, I I I, I, was, I was asking some of the guys in the barbershop today. I told my boys, I said, you know, what congressional district are you in? I bet you, I said, but I bet you you know what a weed man is. <laughs> but you don't know your congr congressional district. I don't know, man. You know, they just listen. And then one of them says, well, you know, our vote don't count. That's just the ballot. I said, see, they, they they banking on you to think just like that. That don't count. Okay, well, whatever. Anyway, so I'm a little discouraged. I'm a little disappointed. I am um, I'm, I'm, I'm just hurt. Then the Congress votes against the Republicans, most of them, the ones that sit on this board. They were trying to name a post office after Maya Angelou in, in, in North Carolina. And all of them voted no. Hmm. Every last one of them voted no. Why? Trump ain't got nothing to do with this. Why they voted? Why they voted no? Why y'all think? <laughs> what could Lee <be> Keith do? <laughs> <laughs> Showing us who they really are, right. and we refuse, as my Angela say, to believe them That's when they harsh. show us who they are. Yeah, we don't want we don't we don't want to accept that. Well, I believe we're getting desensitized to it. <coughs> you know, it, it's happening so much that we just turn our heads and look at them. Well, you know, I have to be honest. I'm not becoming desensitized. I have to see over me before I go into work. Because I'm serious, my attitude about people of a different color has changed. So I have to pray constantly about how I treat them and what I say on my job. Yeah, it's you not from, easy. Because you're from Mississippi. 
Yeah. You want to talk? Yeah. Yeah. You pray. Yeah. You. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. You worse than us. Yeah. So, yeah. Miss Info, y'all. Mm, y'all so no. Yeah. We want you to keep on praying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so so what? I mean it, I mean so we we coming off of. Of what we saw on the news, we see the report, and it looks like the man gonna be the front runner. I mean, I knew it was over, Nicholas, when Richard Shelby, a yeah, 30 yeah, year yeah. senator, yes, sir. a conservative, yeah. a starch Methodist man, mm -hmm. with back, Donald Trump, I said, oh, I know it's over. Now, and Richard Shelby, 80, 80 years old. 81. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 81. Yeah. He just had a first. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah, 30 years he'd been coming. He'd have been in, he'd have been up there 30 years. So when he endorsed him, I said, I already knew what Alabama was gonna be. Yeah. Um so how how do we when there's so much discouragement coming from, you know, you got stuff on your job, you got you got stuff going on, you got, you know, supervisors ain't acting right, co-workers ain't acting right, you know, all that. What I mean, how do you what what you do? I mean, and I'm and I'm I'm coming to Philippians 4. It's hard. Paul talking about rejoicing the Lord always again. I say rejoice. Wait a minute. <laughs> that was in verse 4. That's, that's, that's scripture. Rejoice yeah. in the Lord always again. I say rejoice. Verse 5 says what? Uh, what the Lord, Lord have mercy. <laughs> it's hard when you're going through stuff yeah. to rejoice in it. This don't, this is struggle, struggle is real. And then he says, verse 6, what? Alright, now, when was the last time that we that we made our request we made known unto God? When was the last time that we really told God what we, what we needed, what we wanted, what we needed from him? Really, but in everything by prayer and supplication. But it, but he said, excuse me. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So what Paul is saying, even though you're going through whatever you're going through, he says you got to tell God about it. You got to pray without ceasing. You got to pray and you got to thank Him. Wait a minute, I got issue with Paul when he said that. Because I ain't thankful because I'm going through this. He says, with thanksgiving, let your request, let your request be made known unto God. Known to God. So what do we do? What what I mean, I think, I think I think, let me just say this. Can I just say, yeah, I'm gonna say it anyway. I think <coughs> That sometimes we are too spiritual to see practicality. <laughs> Barney made a very, very bad, valid point. You, you got to plead the blood of Jesus to go on your job. I agree with that. But don't think the folk on your job are your friends. <laughs> see, that's the practicality side of you know you saved, you treat everybody right. But at the end of the day, I can tell you from experience. After you away from that job, them folk don't they ain't gonna call you, they ain't gonna text you, they ain't gonna check on you. Cause guess what? People are users. Do understand that. They really don't care. Listen, I to, to show you, die and see. You think the job gonna shut down for you? No, they're gonna send a flower. And they might not do that. And if they send a card to your folk, they ain't gonna put nothing in it. Everybody just gonna sign. <laughs> and I think sometimes we duke ourselves into thinking because we work with these folks five days a week, some of us work three days a week, 12 hours, some of us work, you know, eight, you know, they, you know, we, we go to lunch together, we down like that. Don't fool yourself. Because you just on there to get a paycheck. And anything that don't affect your paycheck, you shouldn't let it affect your attitude. See, our problem is we're trying to make People in our lives close that we should keep at arm length. 
you know, me and David work, we just co workers. I mean, we ain't got to hang out. See, some of y'all want to make your, 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 yeah. your folk at work, your hangout buddies and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's, 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 that's the wrong thing to do. Get your own friends. Get some friends outside of work. Because what's going to happen is some roles going to get mixed up. Because, mm -hmm. see, one day the Lord may bless you to be the boss. Then they're going to think, because y'all cool, you can do what you want to do. The devil is a lie. If it's going to affect your paycheck, you better write folk up when you're supposed to write them up. Talking about we homeboy. No, we ain't. Now when it come to my check, we ain't. So you got to keep, you got to be royal. All right. So y'all see what I'm saying? So understand that you can't be anxious. And you got to watch. I like, I like when it says don't be anxious for what? Don't, don't, don't be anxious about anything. All right. But everything by prayer and supplication. Now that don't mean that you go in your closet and then you, you know, you looking at your clothes and you ask the Lord, what am I supposed to put on? <laughs> you go in your closet, you touch it, everybody in your closet, in the damn of Jesus. No. That ain't what he's saying. You ain't got to pray about everything. You know you can't go outside and naked and put on some clothes and go on first. That ain't what he's saying. So we can't see, I, I, that, that's, that's where we get some stuff mixed up. It's a spiritual side and then there's a practical side. There's nothing spiritual about you getting up. Laying out your clothes or whatever you're going to wear. Some folks say, you know, I pray about everything. Well, I ain't got to pray about what I put on. If it's clean, I grab the first thing I grab, I'm just going to put it on. I mean, I, don't, I, ain't finna, I ain't finna plan. I mean, you know, that's just, well, some of y'all do that. Right. But you ain't got to pray about it. What, what you got to ask the Lord about what you got to put on? The Lord got more serious things to deal with than your wardrobe. Lord, what I, ooh, I ain't got no clothes. Ooh, Lord Jesus. This guy took the right shirt. Right. <laughs> right. Anybody got to come in on that? So do y'all do y'all do y'all understand what's up? And so in this first part, what Paul is doing, he's encouraging the saints, uh, uh, because they're going through some growing pains. And when you and I want to I want to say this to many of you in this room, and what many of you may be experiencing, you may be experiencing the same thing that I'm that I'm experiencing. There are some people or there are some things that you just outgrow. And you got to be cool with it. You got to be able to let it go. You got to understand that, you know, and recognize when you on two different levels. And be cool with it. But some of us, you know, we want, you know, you know, we've we been down, you know, but, but, but the whole thing is season change. And here's the thing about the season. Who told you how long the season was supposed to last? Some season four days. Just being the whole deal. Some people in your life will only put in your life for you to get the job, and that's it. Now, they done got you the job, now you feel loyal to them. And you need to cut them off because they cancel. Okay, I ain't even deal. I'm talking to somebody here. Don't put your head down. I'm going to take them off when I get through. Right. Y'all need some of this seed to seal this word. Um, so he says, let your request be made known unto God. And watch this. If you let your request, if you let your request be made known unto God. Watch this. He didn't say, let your request, let your request be made known unto your spouse. Okay. Okay. Or your significant other. Or your baby dad. Or your baby mom. He says, let it be known unto me. See, I think sometimes the reason that God can't bless us is because we're telling the wrong folk. You got to tell God. Let, tell God what you need. And he is a supplier. All right? So watch this. Verse 7 says, uh, isn't that verse 7? Uh, when you do that, what will happen? And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind from All right. Understand, and the peace of God. There's a difference between the peace of God and the peace, the peace of God and having peace in God. Mm -hmm. The peace of God would allow you, even when you are going through, to still be able to go through. Even if you got to cry when you get home, the folk won't see you sweat. When you got the peace of God. When you got peace. So, so, so he says, and the peace of God which surpasses our understanding, what, will it, what it will do, it will guard your heart. So folk won't hurt your feelings so quickly. 
Oh, y'all, y'all messed it up. Some of y'all, everybody, everybody, every day hurt y'all feelings. Y'all so y'all being y'all feeling. They ain't speak to you. They ain't do this. They ain't do that. Get out your feelings, please. I keep. Let me tell you something. Let me help y'all. This is the beginning of the year. Take this purple with you. You're on a job. If it don't affect your paycheck, don't it let it affect your heart. The only reason, the only reason you need to get upset with folks is if your money ain't right. <laughs> you know how we do with our money right. Wait a minute, my check. Hold on! You know we're gonna get loud and everything. My check ain't right. You know, white folks go in there, they wanna sit down all bob. They may have made a mistake on my check. Like, wait, hold on! Hold on, Brian! I, I had an automatic drop come out now. You gotta get there right today! You have to cut me a check or something, maybe. You know, I, I ain't lying. Maybe it's me. I'm sorry. So he says, the peace the, which the path I understand will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I'll come back to that later. Then, here's what I like. He says, verse 8. What did he say? Watch this. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So he says, "Listen, I can tell you how to stay out your feelings. Think about this. This are these are the things that I need you to think about. Think about stuff that's pure. Think about stuff that's lovely, commendable, that that's excellent. If there's anything worth of praise, think about that." Because what will happen is you will get your mind engulfed in so, so much about what's going wrong and don't appreciate what's going right. That's why so many divorces happen. That's why folks break up. They can't stay together because you got a Negro in your ear that ain't happened no way. So they want you to bring out all the negative stuff about your boo. Then you go home, you better look at that listen, listen, what they doing right. I guarantee you're going to supersede what the little bit that you worried about. Some of y'all can't say, man. That's all right. I ain't worried about it. He says, you got to, he, he says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, these are the things that you need to think on. And then, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about that. So he says, even if there's nothing pure, if there's nothing true in your life, he says, find something. That's right. He says, he says, he says, find something. And when you find that thing, think about that and then praise God. So here's the thing. I'm worried about the election. I'm, I'm worried about Trump. And I'm sitting up, you know, all day I'm all nervous. And I mean, you know, just worried or scared. And then, uh, listen, I had, to, I had to remind myself what I'm worried about Trump for. But I done looked at an island in Jamaica. I think I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to Jamaica. My homeboy told me I can take $500 over there and live good. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing, though. He can say that. But, um, but, uh, so we, we, we will get wrapped up into, you know, what's wrong and not even appreciate what's, what's good. What's going on in your life? You got your life. You got your health. You got your strength. You got the activity of your limb. You got all this stuff going for you. But if you don't never think about how good God is, how much he has blessed you, and you always busted, broken, disgusted. You always going through this, going through that, going through this, and you're going through that. We all go through peaks. We all go through valleys. We all have situations that we're in. But if, if that's all you're thinking about, you're going to always be depressed. And so the problem is, is that we have a whole lot of people that come to church every week that nothing is wrong with them but depressed. And we hide our depression in religion. And instead of saying, because let's just, let, I mean, let's just, let's just go there. Let me let's just talk about it. Because <clears throat> we just brought this from our childhood. Man, listen, there was some Sundays, me and my mama have talked about this. There was some Sunday that our mama would come to church, and my mama would cry, and she would shout, and I knew why she was crying and shout. It wasn't because there was no Holy Ghost. 
It was because of what we just put up with the night before. Hmm. Y'all, um, see, y'all trying to be all deep in spirit. Y'all trying to be all deep in spirit. Everybody in church that shout and holler ain't shouting because they have. Sometimes you have some hell that you're dealing with. That you got to do something. You got to holler. You got to scream. That's therapeutic. See, instead of you going to lay on somebody's couch and talk about it, you come to church and holler, shout the whole time. <laughs> Get it out. Tell somebody about it. You just running the hot. Don't nobody know what's going on. Am I? I'm trying to, I'm trying to help. Go ahead, Dean. Go ahead. Say, say. That was the couch. Yeah. Yeah, that is that, that, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But, but hollering about but hollering about it when you get back home is still there. That ain't happening. Because sometimes you need the Bible says he has provided a way of escape. And sometimes you need to talk to somebody about your escape right. I'm gonna get, I'm, I, I need to leave the nigga, but I'm scared of him. And so I need somebody to help me. Y'all trying to be all deep spirit. <laughs> I want to get out of here, but I'm scared this nigga might kill. He already told me he's going to kill me now. So I need somebody to help me get out of here. Come over here by 12 o'clock when he sleep. You got to get out of there. Y'all y'all trying to be off. Okay. I'm just, I'm just telling the truth. Not that I speak in respect or want, for I have learned 
and whatsoever say I am, I am. There will be content. All right, now, here's, here's what we need to understand, folks. And here's what we all need to get. We need to get to the other people. We need to get to the other church. You need to get this in your heart. You need to get this in your life, in your spiritual life. If you don't get anything else from this day forward, be honest with yourself. Don't you have everything you need? So why you ain't content? I want to, and, and, and we ain't gonna go no further than that. Because we gotta talk about, we gotta talk about why we are so discontent, contented with what we have. Do you realize that there is somebody that you may be working next to? Wish they had what you had. And you complain that he left his drawers in the floor. You got somebody over here saying, I wish I had somebody to help me. See, y'all, grandma, what grandma you say? You crying with a loaf of bread up under your arm. You better start looking around. What, 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 that, what that old hymn say? Count your blessings. Name them. One by one. Why we ain't content? Why the more we get, the more we want? We got to talk about that. We got to deal with that as a people. Okay. But yes. it depends upon what the situation is. Okay. You do need to pick up behind yourself. No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> somebody else appreciation. Right. Yeah. So whatever little bit you have, appreciate what you got. So appreciate it. Why are we so discontented about what we have? We ain't content. Paul say, what I done, what, what I done learned. I done learned how to be content in whatever situation I find myself in. What's wrong with us? Verse 11. We can't go no further because we got to deal with us. We gotta deal with us. Cause if you don't buy another pair of shoes, you got enough shoes. <laughs> Listen to me. I knew you were gonna say something like that. Well, I, I, I think about that, 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 that uh, we as black people have been, you know, uh, told that we, you know, we just have this so much and look for the American dream. And, we need to get this and that and this and that till we have to see our eyes are, are so big. To, that's why we ain't content. We want more and more. More and more what? Yeah. More and more of uh, uh, stuff. Uh, stuff. Yeah. Of things. You know, that what's we really stuff? don't need, what's but stuff? that's something that we want. Yeah, what what's stuff though? What I mean? Uh, cars, cars, houses, uh, uh, clothes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shoes, the best clothes, and, and you know, <laughs> we want the best. Yeah. But what does that? What the whole thing is? Where does that come from? What? Does, where, where does that mentality come from? Where, where does it come from? Because it just didn't start with us. I know. I, I think. I think it just came from from generation. You know, generation like I said. Okay, uh, you, you you made a bad point. Yeah. Let me say this. That's my that's my first cousin. That's my first cousin right there. We two sisters. Children. Now, she had a lot of siblings. I I didn't have I didn't have a whole lot of siblings. But I can remember when her and my mom and, and my two of my aunts, the 
the two that's deceased, and my mama, they would go to garage sale early Saturday morning. Yeah. And on Saturday morning, it would be like Christmas for us. Because we would wait and anticipate what they coming back. And it didn't bother us. There wasn't no tags on it. But now you try that with some of our children today. What has happened? I'm going to tell you what has happened. We have happened. We did it. Because you bring some of, the, you, you bring some of these children a bag of slightly used polo. I'm going to tell you what my boy going to say. <laughs> what, what store they came from? <laughs> he's going he to ask. What store they came from? He, now, he like polos. That's all he want to wear. He ain't got a damn now. But he, that's all he want to wear. He want to wear polos. But if I bring him a bag of slightly used polos home, he going to ask me or his mama where this coming from. Now, 30 years ago, <laughs> guess what Guess what I would have said? Yeah, yeah. If I would have asked John to make that, oh. boom! Knock yeah. <laughs> out! <laughs> so what has happened is this. We have failed to teach them the principle of Whatever you get, you ought to be thankful for. See, our parents taught us to be thankful. We ain't care that they went to the garage. We ain't care. That's what they call them, the garage sale. They, they, they had them papers out on Friday. They would stop by and get the paper, and they had them marked out, baby. They had a whole. Now, we're going to go over here to Woodley Hill. We're going to start over here. And we're going to go. See, they hear all the other side. <laughs> they didn't come to our garage sale. They, yeah, they went on the other side. Because they know they stuff was going to be slightly used. And they were going to ask for a quarter. We have a garage sale. We want a dollar to it. And you want five dollars. We had like we had the, uh, we got a five and ten. Yo, we had, like, we had the flea market. You know, you buy a wash and dry from a garage sale, it's supposed to be over $25. You come to our house, oh, I need 150 for that. What? <laughs> but we have missed, we have, to, we, and I'm, I'm, me and myself included, we have not taught our children the value of being appreciative for what you do have. Absolutely. That's why they feel so entitled. And that's why they get attitudinal when we tell them they can't have something. Then they, you want to get attitude and not talk to me? How can you not talk to a person that's taking care of you? I'm taking care of you. The only people that supposed to have attitude in the house is the folk that paying the bill. Now the folk that paying the bill, they have all the attitude they want. I do understand. And so now that I'm grown and gone and on my own, I do understand why after my mama worked 16 hour shifts, she came home and there were a few dishes in the sink. That she went off. Yeah. I'm talking about went off. I'm talking about I'm on eight but three. I don't care. It just went off because I didn't recognize the sacrifices that she was making just to put food on the table. So she had the right to do that. But what has happened is we have not taught everything that our children remotely want. We make some kind of sacrifice to get it, and sometimes we just gotta say no. Or you can't have it. And we won't do it. Why do we, why are we not content? Because we are not content because, back to what Deke says, is that when you grew up with nothing, here's, here's the mentality that we have. Because I keep on telling you, I have a phobia. My wife will tell you this. Anytime we get ready to go out of time, I don't care where it is, I don't care if we're going for two or three days, whatever. I pay every bill before I leave. Whether it's do or not. You know why I do that? Because I'm so afraid to come back home to stuff being cut off. Some of y'all can't, that ain't y'all testimony because y'all ain't never stayed in no house where stuff got cut off when you had the, when you had the, when the, when the stuff was off, you had the warm water and towed it from the kitchen, heated up on the kitchen stove, poured in the bathtub. See, some of y'all don't know that about me. See, my daddy was the maintenance man in the project, so when the folk turned the water off, we had a thing to turn it back on. We were. It may be. Because it may be because of us that they start putting the lockbox on. Because <laughs> in the hood, all they used to do is say, uh, hey JC, I I I I water all my dad used to go right around there. They hit him five dollars, he turned that thing, he right back on. <laughs> so I have I have a phobia 
about leaving the house and leaving the house for a period of time and coming back. And so that's now that's a that's a that's a negative and a positive. It's a positive because of course this stuff ain't gonna be off. But my childhood and how I grew up have driven me to that point. All right. Now here's the thing. I got two boys in the house. What am I teaching them? I'm teaching them responsibility. JR hate to watch dishes. You know, all of the children hate to watch dishes. You know, they feel like he was in their mom the other day, so my he's just a slave. That's <laughs> <laughs> my he talks about he going off. <laughs> Y'all sitting around here. I'm talking about he just, I would laugh. Carol was out of time, and I told him to do it, do it, do it short. Carol was out of time. He ended up just going off. I'm in there laughing. He ended up. Cause, cause I said, man, make sure you get the floor and stuff. And make sure you clean our bathroom. Why well, I gotta clean y'all bathroom? I just only I said, well, you gonna clean up our bathroom today. You gonna do it. He he mad. Oh man, y'all just y'all just think I'm some slaves. I can't wait to leave. You know I mean? All that so later on that day, <clears throat> he didn't know I heard him. And so uh, I was saying to my mama, I said, yeah, I said, I said, I heard you on, um, I heard you going off, but if I cleaning up the things and, you know, I said, but, uh, you know, you can do what you want to do if you, you, you know, I got a couple of bills that you can pay. And if you can pay these, sir, you can sit down and I'll clean up for you. <laughs> I promise you. I said, I would much rather be in your position than mine. I promise the Lord. I really do. You don't have to worry about nothing. All you do is tell me or your mama what kind of snacks y'all need for the week, and a boom, they in the they in them. I said that's the kind of life I want. <laughs> that you ask and it shall be given. I said, but in my life, when I go in the store, I got to give the folks something to get something. I said, but I would I would much rather be in your shoes to say, you know, I, Dad, I need this, and it, it, it's it's automatically provided for me. And I said then. Sir, let me tell you this here. We talked about because it it's almost time for them to go to the, get their glasses again. I said, sir, what kind of frames are you wearing? And he started laughing. I said, what kind of frames are those you wearing? Oh, oh yeah, these, these are Ray-Bans. I said, Ray-Bans? Ray-Bans? Yeah. Said, wow. You don't work anywhere? <laughs> I mean, but you got Ray-Bans? Yeah, Ray-Bans? Yeah, 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 I like Ray-Bans. I said, well, <coughs> Do you know why you have Ray Ban? Well, because you bought them. I said, no. I, I, I said, we, we, I paid a little money. I said, it's because I go to work and I got something that's called interest. Something that you don't know about. <clears throat> oh, okay, okay. All you know is if you ask, we give to them. So what has happened is we have done them a disservice because our parents made us work for them. Yes. Now, they may have gotten it. I'll never forget this. Man, my mama used to, how my mama used to shop and do us for Christmas? Like, she'll start buying stuff like in October. Mm-hmm. And she'd yeah. just pile it back in the closet. Yeah. And you know, we thought, you know, we were rich. But we weren't rich. What my mama was strategic to do, every two weeks when she got paid off, she'll buy this item, she'll buy this item. Yeah. Man, we went in that closet early one, one day. Yeah. Yeah. We went in there about mid-November, me and my brother. I ain't, ain't have nothing the rest of the year. <laughs> right? Because what she was trying to do, was she was trying to teach us to pre- be appreciative, but we don't do that. And so the reason I think, I'm just going to say this, I reason, the reason that our children are not content with what they have is because I don't think some of us are content yeah. with what we have. Mm-hmm. I'll say this, I'm going to be done about contentment. <coughs> My wife knows, and I'm a car fanatic, and I'm going to tell you why I'm a car fanatic. I am a car fanatic because Stephanie will tell you, we had regular cars growing up. And I used to hate with a passion that my mom and my dad would pull up to the front of the school smoking, <laughs> popping, I mean, dents everywhere. I mean, just like we was in a lap, baby. I used to be hushed down in the seat. <laughs> And you wait, you can, I just trying to get to school late after the bell rang, everybody. Uh-uh. So I have, I have a phobia about cars. My thing in the back of my mind is, I want my children to be proud to say, oh, that's my, that's my, that's my daddy, or that's my mom. 
the car. So I make sure I, I try to keep some nice cars because I don't want them to have that phobia like me <laughs> looking at a whole juice of the quarter popping and going on. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't have no, it didn't have no power stirring. <laughs> she was a woman though. I'm talking about and driving like it brand new. But that's a, but but my my discontentment, watch this, and most of our discontentment has spilled over to our children. But you got to recognize what your discontentment is, and you got to deal with it, and then teach our children to work for it. I got my children, I got, I got, a, a, I got them some accounts a couple of weeks ago, and uh, <clears throat> JR has a check card, and so I, I said, what, what, well, you know, I'm trying it out. I said, now, I'm going to tell you something, you know, you can swipe it, they ain't got to put a certain amount on there. And, you know, I, so I got him an account, and I got John Michael account. Now, to show you, John Michael is six, all right? And JR is 14. Now, to show you, JR was so excited, you know, he would, and he knows he has the car. I have shown him the car. I have not activated the car, but I've shown him the car. And he's happy that it has his name on it. You know, it has Junior, and he's like, oh, this is cool, I didn't know they did it, I don't know. <laughs> Get what John Michael said. Well, what my, what, you know, I don't need no car. You just put the money in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said, John Michael, it's in the bank, and what I'm going to do, every two weeks, I'm going to transfer so you can have some money. He said, well, you can just give it to me, because I need to go to Dollar Jump. <laughs> So, so that goes to show you, you know $2, somebody give us $2. You grew up in Tuscaloosa, we had Mr. Free. So we used to wait on Mr. Free to come by. You know you're going to have to hold them $2 on. Some of y'all don't know about that. But, but um, the, 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 what, the, what the truck is, the little truck that comes in the neighborhood, ice cream truck. His, his night, we had Mr. Free. He used to sell everything. You know, they had check, drinks, and all kinds of stuff on there. Every neighborhood had a store now, don't have it like that. So, <clears throat> so we used to save them little two two dollars that we got. But did you, you try to give each of them two dollars today? Yeah. They're gonna look at you and yeah. Yeah. what is two dollars? Yes. And then you know now to, I can't give to a market anymore because he can count pretty good. And he know you know what a twenty dollar bill is, he know what a ten dollar bill is. He, you know, when I'm giving something, I'm going in my wallet. He'd be like, no, not that one, not that one, that one. No, sir. <laughs> I have a suggestion. Yes. Um, I'm done. Uh, 